In this video, I'm going to have a look at editing the time lapse sequence we shot in Lightroom. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, in this video, I'll have a look at editing the time lapse sequence I shot in Lightroom. And I'm using Adobe Lightroom 5 here, it's actually 5.3, and this will work for previous versions as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is to just import the time lapse sequence I shot. And these are the ones I shot on the coast of Cork uh, in Kinsale. You can see all the photos there. And I'm just going to import those now. Okay, so these are the imported shots. They're raw files, you can see, CR2. So I'm going to now look to develop these. And I go to the develop option here. And you can see the first one is quite, well, the first few are quite cloudy. I'm actually going to move along to an area that was quite sunny. And I want to kind of use that as the main one I'm going to develop and then apply the settings from that to the other one. So let's have a look at the screen for developing here. So the first thing you can do, given this is a RAW, is I can actually, if I wanted to, I could just change the white balance, which is quite handy to have for RAW files. You can see I can change it to cloudy or shade. And in fact, I quite like the way it was shot, and I'm going to actually just boost the white balance, the temperature a little bit, just to warm it up a little bit, but not too much. Now the next thing I'm going to do, the sky is quite blown out. I really want to show the clouds up so it's a big contrast there with the clouds. So I'm actually going to bring the exposure of the whole shot down a bit just to get those clouds uh, a little bit clearer. I'm going to boost the contrast a bit here. And the nice thing here, you can actually reduce the highlights and boost the shadows. Because again, I want to bring down the clouds as much as I can, the light in the sky. But I also want to bring up the shadows there. So the nice thing you can do there, you can boost the shadows way up there. So I'm going to put that up to there. And I'm going to boost the whites just a little bit. Out there, bring down the blacks a bit as well. Out here, it's beginning to look a bit better now. And I'm going to boost the clarity. That kind of gives a pop to the mid-tones. It gives a kind of apparent sharpening there. So I'm going to boost that a little bit to probably around about there. If the vibrance, I'm going to boost it uh, a little bit as well. And saturation just a tiny bit there. I don't want to overdo the saturation on it. So that's looking a bit better there. And I'm going to add a curve. You can add a curve here. I'm going to add a slight curve. Just boost the brights there and knock down the darks a little bit more. Just to give it a little bit more contrast. So that's beginning to look a little bit better. Now, in fact, looking at now, it's probably a little bit dark, these, even though I've boosted the shadows as much as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost them up a little bit more, but I'm also going to increase the exposure slightly. And what I'm going to do then is bring down the sky again using a local adjustment you can make here, this grad filter. So if I click on that there and come along there, you get the grad filter screen here. And if I position the cross at the top and just drag that down, you can see you can darken the sky in any case. Probably that's a little bit too dark there. I'm going to up it a little bit. So that's probably about right. And then click on done there. So that's done. So that's looking pretty good. I've done most of the adjustments now I want to to this particular shot. Final thing I want to do is to crop it to a movie type of format. So uh, this is from the camera. You can see it's got this area down the bottom. In any case, I want to get rid of the bin and the railings here. So if I go to the crop overlay tool here, now for movies, full HD is, is going to end up being, I want a ratio of 16 by 9. You can see there, so I click on that. And the crop is pretty good there. It gets rid of the bottom bit I didn't want. And I can click done there. And that's pretty well now the finished shot that I want. So having done that, I don't have to go through that whole procedure for the rest of the shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that look now to all of the rest of the 271 photos in the sequence. So all I've got to do here is make sure that all the other photos are selected. So I'm going to press Control A or Command A on a Mac and then just click the Sync button. This screen comes up and I'll make sure you check all on this. So I'm going to include the crop and click on Synchronize. And that there now applies that to all of the shots. Now before I go to the next stage, which would be to try and look to render this into a movie, I want to have a look first as to what it's going to look at roughly before I do that. If I go to Slideshow, 
see there and now in the slideshow you will be able to see the shots as a slideshow so you can see here on the right where it says slide 90 of 271 if I hold my mouse over that and scroll forward you can see it gives a view as to what it's going to look like it's still got some of the ones it's still applying some of the crops etc if I zoom if you click up here and zoom to fill frame it'll actually make sure that the shot fills the frame here and you can see so but doing this you can actually see if there's any actually problems in the shot overall before you go to render it because the rendering takes a good while so what I did notice when I went through this before there's a couple of birds fly across I don't mind the people so much there's not an awful lot I can do to get rid of them um, but the there are birds which fly across which are kind of distracting so I want to try and get rid of those now there's one for example if you see there along the top so I want to try and get rid of this bird here it's in slide 12 and I want to try and remember that I'm going to go through some other ones so what I want to do here is actually flag this I want to make sure that I come back to this one I don't lose it amongst all the different slides when I come to edit these out so what I'm going to do is just right click on the image there and go to set flag and flagged so that's flagged and I'm going to go on looking through the sequence a little bit in fact there's another bird there in the next very next slide there so I'm going to flag this one as well go through there's a couple of birds there may as well get rid of them I'm gonna it won't take too long so I'm gonna set that as flagged and then I'm going to go right the way through and I think there a bird right towards the end of the sequence as well flying across so I'm gonna click on set flag on that as well so when I go I'm gonna go then back to develop because this is where I'm going to try and get rid of these things and you can see you can actually see down the bottom here there's little flags appear on the slides that have the issues I'm just going to make sure that's got the flag there because I think I clicked it off just beware if you click on it you actually get rid of the flag and I'm going to make sure to make it even easier to see all the ones I flagged you can see here it says filter I'm just going to make sure that's put to flagged so now I can see the four shots that I want to actually work on to get rid of the birds basically so I look at the first one here this one for example the one right at the end and I'm going to use here the spot removal tool if I click on that and you can see there there it is and you can change the size of it if I go small or large so I want to make it just around just a little bit bigger than the bird and go over to the bird there click on it and it chooses an area it thinks is a blank area which will work and that's fine for me so I'm going to click on done there that's that one done and next one I'm going to look at is here these two birds here so I'm going to same thing again click on the spot removal brush and just make it a little bit bigger than each bird click on that one that's fine and I'm going to click on this one that's fine and then click on done that's that one done and then next one that bird there click on the spot removal tool fine and then this one here the very first one spot removal tool again and I'm just going to get rid of that one too and click on done and that there is the four of them now edited out the birds have disappeared so I'm just going to get rid of the flags here by clicking on them and make sure this is set back to filters off so I see all the shots so now I've cleaned up the shots I've edited them so the next stage now is to render this as a video let's have a look at doing that now okay now we're going to look to render the time-lapse sequence to a video now the nearest that Lightroom comes to it is the slideshow uh, where well you can actually export a video of a slideshow if we look at the options here for example you can set the slide speed there from anything between one second per slide to 20 now anything from 1 to 20 seconds well that's far too slow for a reasonable speed movie we want minimum of 24 frames per second to get a nice flowing movie so the only way you can really do it is to use some external software and I'll show you which software I'm using now it's called Lightroom time-lapse I'll just open it up here and you can download this and you can use the free evaluation version of it which is excellent 
and it will allow you to render your time lapse. See the link to it here, and I'll put the link in the video as well. Download the free evaluation version, and you can also go and upgrade if you want further features. But the, down, the, the free evaluation version will allow you to create a time lapse from up to 300 photos, which for most purposes, for most of us, is probably going to be okay certainly for up to a 10 second time lapse. If it's a very good program after you've evaluated, you can obviously pay for a license to actually use the more advanced version of it. But this free evaluation version is, is very good as well. So we'll use that now to create our time lapse. So this is the screen you get. Now what actually it does, it installs a plugin into Lightroom itself. And because of that, if I go into Lightroom, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually going to start to export the shots here from Lightroom and it will actually open up into the Lightroom time-lapse program. So first of all I'm just going to go to the library and in the library section I'm going to select all of the pictures here and I'm then going to go to file and export and you see when you go to export because of the plugin has been installed from the install of the Lightroom time-lapse it's already ready to go with it so you can see there's the program it's going to put it into a folder I've created there called Kinsale time-lapse and it's going to put it into a, a sequence called sequence 2. I'm just going to call this Kinsale 2. And then all you do is you export. It starts to export. Now you can see it's starting to export there and it'll go through these. It takes around about 12 minutes for this particular sequence of 271 photographs. So I'll have a look at that when it's finished. Okay, after creating the JPEGs, this screen pops up called Render Video, and it's going to basically now render to a folder you can set. You can choose whatever folder you want. I'm going to choose the one I've got there, and you can see that the output file has named it, and it's going to give it an MP4 format, which is fine. If you want to have ProRes, you need to upgrade to the paid version, but MP4 is fine. Output size, well, I'm going to choose 1080p and 16 by 9 and the frame rate you can choose I'm going to choose 24 speed is fine I'm going to choose high quality pixel format you have no choice over that and then you can render the video you can delete those temporary JPEG files afterwards I'm just going to keep mine in case I want to render them again in another video so I'm just going to click on render there and once you do that you can see here down the bottom it's starting to render the video really quickly and that will be done literally in probably a couple of minutes. Okay, once it's rendered, we can simply have a look at the file. So there's the render there, and if we just double click on that, we can just start the play. And that's the time lapse created, as I said, in both Lightroom, doing the editing, etc., and then using that to create the export using Lightroom time lapse software using the evaluation version of it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful.